Welcome to our devotion today. I'm so happy you joined me. Today is Wednesday, January 27th, 2020. We're going to be taking a look at Psalm 62 today and kind of looking at, looking back, I guess you could say, uh, how are things a year ago? And then also looking forward, how things might be a year from now, uh, putting these things into perspective, um, all within the context of God's grace. And so um, I hope you're doing well, and I thank you for joining me. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from Psalm 62. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He is, he only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him, like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than the breath. Put no trust in exhortation. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. For you will render to a man according to his work. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Think back. How were things going for you a year ago? Now think ahead. How might things be a year from now? You know, these days, there is a dangerous snare out there in front of us. It's a snare, a trap, that says, I remember how things were not so long ago, and I really hope things can go back to, like, to being like that really soon. And even if the words don't actually come from our lips, that snare on the path before us wants to take us down with the thinking, can't things just go back to normal? Is there anything else out there? And I'll take anything other than how things are today. You know, falling victim to that trap can mean falling into a big hole, as we remember who it was that has given us this day. I'll talk about more of that in just a moment. What was there about the situation a year ago that made us think that things were pretty good? Was it a steady job and steady income? The things that might put our hearts at peace? Hmm. Were we thinking a year ago that the financial rug could be pulled out from under our feet at any moment? Probably not. Will things recover enough in this country and in our world so that next year we'll be able to be so much less worried about our income, our jobs, our financial futures. What happens, though, if we consider what God put down in writing over 3,000 years before we were even born? Consider Deuteronomy chapter 8. You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember, the Lord your God. 
for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And then there's more in verse 10 of our text from Psalm 62. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. From God's perspective, there's not a single difference between what is true about money and income last January before this dreaded pandemic and what will be true about money and income next January. I wonder what that means about money and income today. Has there ever been a time in your life where you were as suspicious about symptoms as you have been lately? Did you think last January that one cough today might land you in the hospital tomorrow? When have you ever before in your life thought that the slightest tightness in your chest probably meant you were going to be placed in the ICU? A year from now, will you feel the pressing need to wash your hands a dozen or more times a day? Or thoroughly sanitize the push bar on the grocery cart? Now consider those eternal truths God put down in writing so long ago. Consider Job 14, verse 1. Mortals born of woman are of few days and full of trouble. Or consider James chapter 4, verse 14. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Is there some reason that I was not super sensitive about the shortness of my days only 12 months ago? Will that sensitivity be gone without a trace 12 months from now? I wonder what that means about my health and my life today. The good news for you and me is that God's truth transcends all circumstances. The fleeting nature of my wealth and the frailty of human life are in sharp focus these days, maybe sharper focus than ever before. But wealth has always been fleeting, and human life has always been frail. And so perhaps we should ask God's forgiveness for thinking that we're okay only when there are no wealth or health concerns. Maybe we should plead God's forgiveness for thinking we're okay only when the circumstances suit us. Maybe we should pray for the Lord's forgiveness because Jesus Christ was pure and holy for us. Every single day he walked the face of this earth. Perhaps we should beg the Lord's forgiveness because Jesus has already paid the price for every last sin. Perhaps then we should invite the Lord to help us see this day, as frightening and as difficult as it may be, we should invite the Lord to help us see it as he would have us see it, as a true blessing from him. In the name of Jesus, amen. Would you pray with me? O oh Lord, you promise that in all things you work for the good of those who love you. Help me see your loving hand in this time of trouble. Save me from doubt, relieve my anguish, and lead me through these dark days with the light of your presence. Amen. Now would you join me in praying the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for this devotion today. I pray that you are doing well and I look forward to seeing you again. Until next time, the Lord be with you.